everyone, it's Alice and today we are going to talk all about Scandinavian books. This is a request I get all the time to either specifically recommend Norwegian books, because I'm Norwegian I'm assuming, or Scandinavian books that are available for English readers. So here we are. I've gathered up an assortment of all kinds of different books, so hopefully there will be a little something for everyone. I'm gonna divide this into different sections and the first one is gonna be like crime slash mystery fiction and this is a pretty big section in part because Scandinavians love their crime fiction and also it seems like those books are more likely to be translated because there are a lot of those available. Then we have a classics section which is also pretty big and then I have some smaller sections at the end like general fiction and historical fiction and then I think I have one non-fiction book. We're gonna start with the crime and mystery books and a lot of these books are actually in series so there's a lot to read here if you like crime and mystery. The first books that I want to mention are the Millennium Trilogy by Stieg Larsson and this consists of the girl with the dragon tattoo, the girl who played with fire, and the girl who kicked the hornet's nest. Now there are actually more books in the series technically and what happened was that the author wrote the first three and then he had planned to write more but then he sadly passed away so someone else has continued writing the books but I haven't read any of those and I've heard kind of mixed things about them so I'm only recommending the first three. In the series we basically follow this journalist who is working on a case that of course pulls him into all of this dark stuff and as he's working on it he comes into contact with this prodigy hacker and it's the kind of books where in each book there is a mystery but then there's also like an overarching story that goes over all three books if that makes sense that it have to do with like the characters. I personally think this is one of the best crime trilogies that have ever come out from this part of the world so if you haven't read them yet I really really recommend them. They are very very dark in parts though and they're pretty heavy and in parts very violent so just keep that in mind. The second book I want to mention is in a series and I've read several of them but I only kind of want to recommend this one book. It's The Snowman by Yul Nespa and this is the seventh book in the Hari Hula series but you can read these out of order without missing too much I feel and this is by far the best one in the series I think. I've had very mixed luck with the rest of the books but this one is excellent. In the opening sequence of this we meet this boy who wakes up in the middle of the night to find his mother has gone missing and in their backyard there is the snowman that for some reason has his mother's scarf around its neck and no one really pays too close attention to that but then the detective that we follow in the series starts looking into the case and he starts seeing a pattern of women going missing on the first day of snowfall of each year and that has happened for like several years. It's a really really good mystery, it's very exciting and I just remember being completely sucked into this and it's just a very very intriguing story. Next we have got the Sebastian Bergman series by Jork and Rosenfeldt and the first book in the series is called Dark Secrets and it mainly follows this psychologist, criminal profiler and expert in serial killers who is a little bit of a troubled man. He rubs a lot of people the wrong way and he's just he's just a lot. So when he is called in to investigate the case of this 16 year old boy who has gone missing, things get a little bit sticky. The mystery in here is really good and we also get to know the team that is working on this case with this psychologist. And one of the reasons I think the series is so good is that the characters are so well done. They're really interesting and complex people and we follow several characters but we mainly focus on the psychologist and criminal profiler and he has a lot of stuff that he needs to sort through and he is just a terrible, terrible human being but that makes him very interesting to read about. He is incredibly unlikable though so if you don't like reading about unlikable characters Maybe this isn't for you, but this is like one of the best 
like most well done unlikable characters that I've read. This is also the kind of series that has like an overarching story going on throughout the series and there is something to do with that that happened in the first book at the very end of it that literally made me gasp out loud. So that part of the story is also really good. Another series that's really good is the Yuna Linda series by Lars Kepler which starts with the book The Hypnotist. And in that book, there is this gruesome triple murder and this detective demands to like investigate the case because he just finds it really interesting. And they're having some problems investigating the case because there is actually a survivor of this murder. Like one person survived, but he has lapsed into shock, obviously, and they can't get anything out of him. So they decide to hypnotize him. We follow the detective in part throughout the story, but we also follow the hypnotist who is called in to work with this victim. And he has sworn to never hypnotize anyone ever again. And if you read the book, you'll find out why. This is probably more of a plot-driven book than a character-driven book though. And it's very compulsive and fast-paced and it has this drive to it that just makes you want to keep going. Then we have got the Fredrika Bergman and Alex Recht series by Kristina Olsson. And the first book in this series is called Unwanted. And in here we follow this detective who is a quite closed off person and he has to work with this investigative analyst and they come together on this case of a girl who has gone missing from a train and she's gone missing like in broad daylight in the middle of the day and there are hundreds of potential witnesses but no one seems to have seen anything. The mystery in the first book is really dark and tense and gritty and one of the things I really like about the series is that we have two very different main characters that we're following and they're coming at these cases from two very different perspectives and I think that's an interesting way of trying to solve a mystery. Yet another first book in a series that I want to recommend is The Ice Beneath Her by Camilla Greba and I don't actually know what this series is called but it's really really good and we meet this detective of course who teams up with a profiler. A lot of these books are a little similar I'm realizing but they're so good and they team up to try to solve this brutal murder that has happened in a suburb and they come to realize that this murder is very similar to this unsolved one from a decade ago. This again has excellent characters, they're really interesting and complex, and for me characters are really really important in a story, so I always love when they're really well done, and I prefer books being slightly slower but having more like character investigation and development in a way, and this really has that, and the mystery is very intriguing, it's pretty sinister, but it's very interesting. Finally, moving on to a standalone book, we have Quicksand by Malin Pashon Giolito. And this follows the court case after this massacre has happened at a school in one of Stockholm's wealthiest suburbs. And we follow this girl named Maya, who has been charged with her involvement in the massacre that left so many of her classmates dead, including her best friend and her boyfriend. This is a little bit of a different one, and I remember when I started reading this, I was like, okay, this is a little bit different, but then it didn't take me long until I was glued to the page. Like, I just had to know what had happened in this book, and it's very interesting because we're following this main character who you never really know who she is or if you really like her or not and it's the kind of book where slowly but surely all of the puzzle pieces are revealed to us. One of the things I really liked about this book as well is that it has some like underlying commentary on Swedish society which is pretty similar to Norwegian society and I could recognize a lot of it and I thought that was very interesting. I think if you're not from this part of the world, you might not get that, but if you are, it sort of adds another layer to the story that makes it even better. The last book in the crime section that I've got for you is another standalone. It's The Silver Road by Stina Jaksson, and this follows two people. It follows this father whose daughter has gone missing and has been missing for three years, and he spends all of his free time just searching 
for his daughter in this area that she went missing in. And then we follow this teenage girl who moves to the area and is trying to like get a new start for herself and is trying to find her place but it's not as safe as you would think because of course there is darkness lurking about. I think the characters again in this are done really well and the setting is excellent and it adds a certain kind of atmosphere to the story that I really really like. It is a little bit of a shorter one but it's very well written and as most Scandinavian crime books it gets pretty dark. Moving on to the next section, we have classics for those of you who are interested in those. And the first one I want to recommend is one that I feel like every Norwegian has like grown up with in one way or another, and it is Norwegian Folk Tales by Osbjørnsen and Mo. Osbjørnsen and Mo is basically our version of the Grimm brothers. And in the 19th century, they went all around Norway gathering up all of these folk tales, which they then publish. The collection contains folk tales like all of the stories of the Ash Lad, which I remember those stories really, really well from growing up. And then I also loved, I think it's called the seventh father of the house or something. And I actually really need to reread these. I haven't had a full collection of them ever, I think, but I really want to get it. And I want to like reread some of these stories. It's a huge part of Norwegian culture and if you want to read it I hope you like trolls because our stories have a lot of them but that's the charm. I also in my research for this found this book that I actually haven't read but I think it could be interesting to share anyway. It's called Nordic Tales and this caught my eye in part because it's beautiful but also because it contains 16 folk tales from Norway, Denmark, Sweden, Iceland, and Finland. So you get a little bit of everything. And I actually kind of want to read this, like buy this and read this myself, because I'm mostly familiar with Norwegian folk tales and then some Swedish ones, but the rest of the Nordic countries I'm not that familiar with. So I think this could be really cool to read. It's also illustrated, which I love, and it's just a beautiful book. I would also recommend The Complete Fairy Tales by Hans Christian Andersen. And you might be more familiar with these than the Norwegian ones because these have been translated loads and a lot of them are quite well known. So this collection includes stories like The Little Mermaid, which you may have heard of, and The Emperor's New Clothes, and The Ugly Duckling, and stories like that. The fairy tales that I remember the most were Thumbelina, which was one of my favorites, and I remember I had this illustrated copy of that story that I absolutely loved. I don't know where that copy went. I think we just gave it away at some point and I'm really sad about it because I loved that book. And then I really remember <laughs> the story, The Little Match Girl, I think it's called. That made a huge impression on me, mostly because like now when I think about it, I was way too young to read that story. It is like the saddest story ever and it's so heavy. And that story haunted me for years. Then we've got a book that I've recommended several times. It's The Ice Palace by Tarja Ivesos. And this is considered like his masterpiece in a way. And it tells the story of two friends who haven't spent a lot of time together, but their connection is really profound. And so when one of them goes missing, the other is devastated. It's a story of friendship and loneliness and feeling like you don't have a place in the world and that part of your life when you're taking the step from being a child to growing into an adult. It is a little bit of a weird one, but it's very, very good. And it is also quite short, so it's a pretty quick read. The next book is not a quick read by any stretch of the imagination. And I actually read this for school. I chose to write a paper on this and it took me ages. And I remember my teacher even warned me about it. He was like, I don't know if this is a good idea, but on I went anyway. And somehow I got through the book. It's Kristin Lovransdotter by Sigrid Unset, which is technically a trilogy, but I read it in like a, there was like a book that had all three books in one. And so I read all of them. The books are called The Wreath, The Wife and the Cross in English, I think. And it's basically set in 14th century Norway and we follow the life of this passionate and headstrong woman. In a lot of ways, these books are very much about the day to day, but it also takes a look at 
the religious and political stuff that was going on at the time in Norway. And we follow the life of this woman who grows up deeply devoted to her father. She ends up going to get an education at this convent. She meets a man because, of course, she defies her parents by marrying this man. And she basically ends up with this life that maybe she had not anticipated. These books are on the slower side, but there is a lot of beautiful descriptions and imagery along the way, and it is interesting to follow one person throughout an entire life, and it's an interesting time period to read about, I think, at least. There is a lot of religion and politics in it. I remember the religious stuff the best, but it's been a while since I read it, and so there is quite a lot of that in it, but I think it it gives an interesting look at Norway in this time and it has a lot of commentary to it and it's intricate and emotional and a classic for a reason. Then I have basically an author to recommend and you can sort of just pick and choose what you want to read really, but I would recommend anything by the author Ostri Lindgren who perhaps most famously wrote Pippi Longstocking and these were stories that I grew up with. I loved the books and there was also either a movie or a series that I remember watching. And when I was thinking of stories that I grew up with for this video, I kept like coming across things and I was like, oh yeah, that's Ostri Lindgren and that's Ostri Lindgren and that's Ostri Lindgren. She wrote so many things that were such a huge part of my childhood. All of these stories were stories that I loved when I was growing up and she didn't just write Pippi Longstocking, she also wrote Ronja, the robber's daughter, I guess is what it's called in English, and Emil in Lundabagge. It's so weird to say these things, like these titles in English, because I don't really know how to say it. But she wrote so many stories. Also, The Brothers Lionheart, which I loved. And she has so much stuff that is so good. I also think if you have kids, these are excellent stories to read to them. And I feel like these are the kinds of stories that are fun to read for both adults and kids. And so when you're reading them, you can also enjoy it. Lastly, for the classics, I actually have some plays that I want to recommend that I read in school. So I actually studied them at least a little bit and I remember really liking them. Both of them are by Henrik Ibsen, who is one of Norway's most famous playwrights, I would say. He's one of the big four. We had like four of them at a certain time that were huge. We studied all of them, but these are the ones like the ones by him are the ones that I remember the most. And if you've gone to school in Norway, you will have come across this playwright at some point, at least once, if not 20 times. He has loads of plays, but the ones I remember loving the most were A Doll's House and The Wild Duck. It is a little bit weird to recommend plays I know because they're sort of meant to be seen and maybe not read, but I just thought I'd mention them anyway. Then we have got the general fiction section where I don't have a lot of books, I'm not gonna lie, but I have a few. The first ones are books that I've recommended time and time again. It's The Climate Quartet by Maya Linda, which consists of The History of Bees, The End of the Ocean, and The Last Wild Horses. And then there's gonna be a fourth book, which is actually coming out this year, which is very exciting. These books are not in a series in the traditional sense, and you can read them out of order if you want and just read one or whichever one appeals to you the most. There is some stuff that you'll get out of it if you read it in order, but it's not important to the story really. It's just there. Each book in the series deals with a different kind of climate issue, and the books are the kinds of books that has like a perspective that's close to present day, and then a historical perspective, and then a couple of them have future perspectives as well. And so we follow different characters in different timelines in a way. The first book deals with bees, the second one with water, and the third one with animals, and the fourth one is going to deal with disease, which is very interesting in the times that we live in. <laughs> these are the kinds of books, though, that although they deal with all of these issues, we very much focus on the characters, and we see how the characters are dealing with the world that they're living in. And so it gives us a very human perspective on everything, and they're definitely more character-driven stories than plot-driven stories. I kind of feel like 
these books actually are on their way to becoming modern classics here and then eventually they'll just be classics like i think from this time these are some of the books that we are going to keep and remember and keep reading i can't wait for the fourth book though i think it's going to be very very interesting then we've got a book that i read in my teens and i think you could actually call this a modern classic at this point it's sophie's world by justine gordon and I read this pretty early in my teens, actually. And to be honest, I don't remember much of the story, but I really remember the feeling it gave me. It almost felt like a fever dream. It's a young adult book, but it's from that time when young adult wasn't its own genre, if that makes sense. And it's about this teenage girl who becomes obsessed with the question of who are you? So it's a very philosophical book. There's a lot of philosophy in here and it's really weird from what I remember. And I don't know if I fully grasped it when I read it, but I remember it being quite weird and eye-opening in a way. There is also a little bit of a mystery going on as well, if I remember correctly. So there's that going on too. Then I've got some historical fiction for you. And firstly, of course, we have another series. It's the Knight Templar Trilogy by Yang Guo. And this consists of The Road to Jerusalem, The Knight Templar, and The Kingdom at the End of the Road. This starts off in 1150 and we follow the son of this aristocratic family. And we basically follow him throughout his entire life. And there is so much that happens in this trilogy that it's impossible to summarize. I read these books in my teens and I read a lot of books in my teens. I was a very bookish person back then as well. And I don't remember most of the books that I read back then, but these ones I still remember. And I still remember stuff that happens in the books which for me is like amazing. And I also remember just being so sucked into these. It was actually my dad who recommended these books to me. And my dad reads, but he's not a big reader. And so when he flies through something and he says something is good, it's good. And I actually think I ended up stealing the last book from him when he was reading it because I just flew through the first two and I couldn't wait for the third one. And so I just took his copy. I don't actually know if he noticed, but in my defense, I did give it back like a week later, so maybe he just didn't have time to notice that I'd stolen it. Then we've got a book that I feel like is a little known on booktube at least, like I've seen some people mention this, and I think I got this recommendation from booktube actually. It's We the Drowned by Karsten Jensen, and this starts off in 1848, somewhere around there I think, and it spans like over a hundred years, two world wars, and several generations of people. But the main story is about this father who escapes at sea and his son who is trying to find him. There is a lot more going on in here as well, but it's basically an adventure story slash history book in some ways. Like there's a lot of history, but there's also action and adventure. And I loved the characters in here. The settings are excellent. And it is a little bit of a slow book, but it's well worth the read. Lastly, we have one singular nonfiction book, which also actually happens to be a graphic novel. It's Women in Battle by Marta Bren and Jenny Jordal. And this takes us through, I think like 150 years like of recent history, and it celebrates the fight for women's rights all over the world. This gives us a historic overview of the past 150 years and tells us about so many amazing women that have been important in the fight for women's rights. It is quite simple in a lot of ways, but it's effective and I feel like this is a great read both for kids and adults. All right, everyone, that was the last title on my very long list. I know that was a lot of books, but that's what happens when you try to find a little something for everyone. Hopefully some of you have found some books that you maybe want to try and read and I would love to know if any of you have any Scandinavian or Nordic books that you'd like to recommend in the comments, both for me and for everyone else, so we can have like even more recommendations down there. I would love to hear all about it. That is gonna be it for me today though. Thank you very much for hanging out with me and I will see you soon.